We are back and ready to see the field tests for the cardboard robots. Kevin Platt's team was first on the table. Their design was fairly straightforward and they were quite successful, scoring six goals in the 10 minutes allotted for the test. Next up was Cody Kozer's team. Remember their scissor lift? Well, that idea was scrapped and this was their new design. Unfortunately, the redesign left them no time to test their prototype. Rejecting an idea is often difficult, but Mr. Bean says that it's all part of the process. They'll get so far and then realize this isn't gonna work. And uh, at that point, they need to make a decision and sometimes it's hard to let go. You've been working with an idea for quite a while, mm -hmm. but to let go and to try something else. Mm -hmm. And that's what a couple teams had to do is reach that point where they said, you know, we're not going to be able to do this in the time we have left and try another way. They got off to a rough start when a wheel froze up and as Kyle tried to fix it, the clock continued to count down. Eventually, they were forced to carry their robot to the other side of the playing field. Retrieving a ball from against the wall or in the corner was difficult. This proved to be true for most of the robots. David Artley, Curtis Regal, Jordan Krismer, and Nathan Hoover were able to score several goals, but they spent a lot of time maneuvering balls into the right position in order to get the shot. The final robot, piloted by Brent Bastian, looked pretty much as it did when we saw it a few weeks ago. They had solved the issue with the front end and their robot fared well in the field test. It was interesting to see how challenges cropped up during the field test that hadn't even been considered during preliminary trials in the hallway or on the tabletops. Failing forward is part of what Bean tries to teach his students with this project. Failure is really the, a part of the process to get to success. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I show them the, the students a video, um, it's from a company called IDEO, and on their wall they have a, a poster and it says, fail often so you'll achieve success sooner, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's really true. Even the ball feeder is an example of a failure that turned into a success. I um, mentioned to the students that I was trying to develop a ball feeder that would automatically feed a ball out onto the court, and I started... Uh, one design which didn't work and I showed the students you know here's a design I built a little prototype it didn't work so then I built a, a second design and that one failed and one of my students uh, Kevin saw what I was doing and decided he'd like to try it to work on it and make it work and so it kind of became a little competition because then I went to another design mm -hmm. that I built and uh, he ended up getting it to work, and uh, it was really neat. Kevin Platt's design was dubbed Apollo 13 because they had to fit a square peg into a round hole in order to make the design work. And it did work, most of the time. Once the field testing is complete, Bean will spend time with each class and talk about the results. We'll sit down, and I call it debriefing, and we'll talk about what worked, what didn't, and what did we learn from it. What if we had a chance to do it again, what would we do different? Our hats are off to William Bean and his high-tech students. This unique program teaches in a tangible way the process of developing new products and gives them skills that will serve them far beyond the doors of Milton High School. Cardboard robots built by students right here in your neighborhood. Just ahead, celebrating 40 years of making beautiful music.